So you just design your cluster that your working set fits into the uh, RAM layer, into the caching layer you have, and it's nice if you have more users, more data, well, you just add up another node and you can remove them later on doing if you don't need them all the time and so on. And so it's very easy to design these systems and use them, and that's by companies like AOL Advertising or um, uh, MediaMind and, and um, uh, lots of ad companies are using it for that. Then, of course, social gaming. We already talked about, about that a little bit with Zynga as the, as the key um, highlight client there, but um, there's lots of, lots of them out there. And for them, I think the, the ease is a big um, issue. Um, we talked about ease of administration so far. What we haven't talked much about is um, how hard or easy is it for programmers to use these systems. And again, I think it's something where key, um, especially the more key value um, uh, store model really makes it easy because they are by their nature very simple in the operations that they support. Um, and it makes it very easy for programmers. They don't need to learn anything super complex to get started. You know, get, set, delete, and add an increment, decrement. You know, if you've got six or seven verbs that you can use to do almost all your, all your activities, it's really easy to program against. In our case, we're actually lucky because we're memcached compatible on the, on the wire, so literally you can use your existing memcached um, libraries, and that makes it that's something that many programmers are already familiar with today. You know, and then so social gaming, of course, also the ability to grow quickly. You know, we have customers who literally had over a weekend grow games from hundreds of thousands of users to millions of users. You know, somebody had a link and it went viral and people started playing a game. And you better be able to ramp up your infrastructure really, really fast. Because if your users come and the game is slow or not available, well, they just go away again. That's, that's how, how it is these days in the social gaming space especially. And, I mean, it's the same true for all websites and other things as well, right? The audience is very fickle. If things are slow or not available, very quickly they'll just choose and go to one of your competitors. Um, and so, of course, now what's interesting is that there's also a whole bunch of more traditional, um, you know, spaces that are starting to look at the NoSQL. We're working with telcos, uh, even in the military space, and all kinds of other um, areas where just this combination of scalability, low latency, ease of use, and all the other things that we've heard so far really are applicable. And so, you know, as a result, these days we've got you know everything from uh, over a thousand nodes, uh, paying customer nodes at you know like Zynga, you know, lots of customers with uh, hundreds of nodes. Um, uh, with their annual licenses down to, you know, um, this, the smaller cl customers who have clusters of like, you know, tens of nodes and so on. Um, what we see here now um, is something about how a customer actually moved to Membase. Uh, I'm sure most of you are not starting a new thing. They might have existing software and thinking about how to get to NoSQL. Now, what, what this customer has done with their game, and you see here on the top we've got the app server, so they call the web service, which is the thing that runs the, the game logic basically, and then at the bottom here you see the cluster of Membase nodes. And um, what they were doing, they originally were in MySQL and Memcached, and because uh, Membase is Memcached compatible, it actually gets easy, easy to migrate, because basically previously where you would go in the step and check the cache, whether the data is already in the cache or not, um, you now, well, if it was already in Membase, you would just use it from there. If it was not, you'd get it from the database, then put it into the cache, which is now the database, and this way you would migrate your data. And, um, you can do this at runtime, and the nice thing is this way you actually start migrating the data of the um, <coughs> most frequently used users at first because they are the ones most likely to be using it right now. And so you get the benefit of the new system very quickly, and then only at the end there is typically one kind of um, phase where you then take the data that hasn't been accessed over a certain period of time and you just um, shove that more batch style into the system. Um, but those has uh, made it uh, very easy for people to migrate, and we have had several customers who've, who've successfully done this uh, fairly painlessly to go from MySQL and Memcached to just Membase, and then as a result, cut out a whole layer to manage. No need to manage the MySQL layer anymore. Okay, let's talk a little bit maybe um, about uh, where we're heading. I talked about Couch and how Couch One has merged uh, with Membase. Um, Couch, of course, um, is a document database. It's one of the JSON-based ones um, that uh, Dwight was mentioning earlier. Um, 
and uh, it's, it's known for its, its great uh, data integrity. It's, it's an append-only B3 on disk, uh, meaning that, that the, the way the data is stored on disk is very, very robust. Um, and of course, it got queryability and indexing uh, via, they do it via incremental map reduce, if you want to go very detailed and fancy and technical, but it's basically a way of building indexes that distributes very nicely. And this is where really it gets exciting for us because we are taking now the caching layer and the clustering from Membase, but we're replacing the persistence layer with uh, CouchDB. And as a result, we get all the benefits of a document store combined with all the benefits um, that we had with Membase already. So now you get the low latency still to access your data, but you can also index and query it uh, using the Couch interface. And that's really an a, um, exciting product that we're building on. And um, maybe, sorry. I was going to ask, uh, you know, th that sounds exciting, but what about existing Membase customers? How, how does the backwards. migration? It's, it's fully backwards, backwards compatible. Backwards compatible. It's just going to be an upgrade. And um, it will also be the, the, the Couch API will be preserved. So um, um, the, the product line will also stay Couch to be compatible for kind of the legacy users. But then there really is kind of a new um, API that combines the best of both, uh, which is what you want to use for a full benefit. Now, and one exciting thing, lastly, maybe to, to wrap up, is that um, Couch also runs on, on mobile platforms. And this is, I think, a whole area where, you know, if you think we're cutting edge now with the NoSQL space, where everything is heading, and, you know, when we're talking to customers, is that everybody now wants to go mobile, of course, because everybody, you know, just look at the panel here, right? Everybody has their smartphone. Everybody wants to access data. And the problem is that even though we all have 3G, 4G, God knows what, as time goes by, all of us will have stuck at the point where we, we hammered our phone, but we can't get the website or the data to access because the data uh, connection is too slow, it's down entirely, we're in a tunnel, God knows what. Now, the nice thing that we can do with Couch is we can actually put your data back onto your phone. Say, so you can do client-side caching? It's, it's a little bit more than caching because it's actually, you are able to update the data in the cache, meaning you have a local database which you can read from an update, and then when you have connectivity, it syncs back with the larger database that you have in the cloud and your data center. Okay, so, so you can... You can uh, yes, it's, it's similar in, in the, in the high-level concept, absolutely. The right back cache. Uh, well, it, it, with conflict resolution, right? So that's the thing. It's, it's, if, you, if you can guarantee that there would only be one place where the update has happened, which is on the mobile device, then just writing the change back is easy, where it gets difficult if you've got lots of people who might choose to update the same data. So that's when you need the conflict detection and resolution and so on, which is where it gets a bit more involved than caching. I, and, I and, presume yeah. it's right back it's actually, um, so um, Couch is fully MVCC, so basically there is a version number for a document which gets, uh, which grows or which changes as the uh, documents are edited. So that the nice thing is that also when now devices have connectivity back, you don't need to transmit the entire change log basically. Instead you say, well, I've got this version of a document, here it is, and then the receiving end can go, okay, this replaces the one that I've got, because this is newer, this is a new update, or it goes, oh, well, I had another conflicting update for this same document. We need to figure out which one we should use and so on. And so this whole mobile um, side is something we're very excited about, um, uh, the ability to sync between the big, you know, clustered databases and all the way to the mobile devices, um, all with the, with the same technology um, from within the Couchbase product line. Very cool.